Um, yeah, so yeah, and then I raised uh, three hundred thousand dollars from literally friends and family. Um, worked out and I raised X amount of money, and then I just sold it by such songs to different people who felt this was a good idea and wanted to invest. Um, did a series A round of funding in November. By then, we had a product that was actually you, know, you could drag and drop stuff and you could build things that looked like there was something there. Um, then we got five million dollars from uh, Richmond, which is listed to JSC. It's one of the Rupert family businesses. Um, and uh, that money was basically to allow us to set the operations up offshore, start building the tech offshore, and uh, you know, up, to, up until then just be prototyping and trying to get something and showing this, this thing can actually work. Um, so then, you know, packed my bags, moved to, uh, moved to San Francisco, and we started hiring people. We've, we've got 30 people there now and 20 in Cape Town, so we've got a so dual workforce, which works really well because, you know, uh, when, when when we need things done late at night, or the service goes down, or whatever it is, the guys who are dealing with it and vice versa. So it's continual 24 7 business. The outside of that is why I'm working more hours than we expect or would like to. I, mean, I think at one stage before, so when we were doing the Series B funding one in February, that the month before, I was probably putting in something like 80 to 100 hours a week, just trying to get the deal closed and all the other bits and pieces to go with it and trying to get up for this year because that was the middle of the you know, economic crisis, everything was falling apart and, and everything was, it was going up pretty bad in the States. So I had to move fast to make sure we could close the deal um, and, and get the money in the bank. Um, we've also implemented the monetization strategy this year, uh, which is a big thing. I mean, some companies like Twitter, uh, don't just, they just don't have monetization you know, action in play. They're not actually making money yet. And that's a problem because you can't burn investor capital forever. At some point, it's going to be self-sustaining. Ultimately, investors are putting money in to make a return. Huh? You know, and the, 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 the problem with Silicon Valley, I'd say, is up until now, a lot, a lot of, because the number of large companies out there that just want to buy technology and buy, buy innovation, and they're effectively outsourcing innovation, the problem there is that there's no urgency often to build companies that make money and make a profit because the investors are just happy with you know, putting in five million and getting out 20 because some other company bought it and they'll monetize it. And when the economic crisis hit, because a lot of companies didn't, um, build a proper business model, all about sharing and carrying content all over the web and a social media from you know, frenzy. It's just, there's just nothing to it. So these companies are all kind of crum crumbling right now and all these social experts are out of jobs trying to convince you know, the Ford Motor Company that they should you know, start getting users and through these networks. It's just, I mean, it, it, it was a house built in sand. Um, but yeah, so we're lucky that we have a monetization strategy and we have a plan in place. And I think that's, that's one of the nice things about Cape Town and, and, and South Africa. I think you're all pretty, you know, because money is hard to come by and no one wants to buy any company and they want to build it themselves. When you build companies, you build it for profit because like, it's very difficult to sell companies in South Africa. The, the number of transactions that happen here is so much smaller than the US uh, because you know, the, the labor is cheap. So why pay you know, five million or ten million for another company when you can probably hire some people and build it yourself? And, you know, there's this whole lot of invented year syndrome and people don't want to buy companies and it'll change. But uh, you know, until then, you when you start businesses, you have to build it for profit and not for not for sale. Um, that's for words in the past year as well. So I want to talk about the stages of going through how we got from one stage to the next and how we're able to raise the funding because yeah, I'm guessing most of the guys in this room probably at the angel stage or maybe you've got some significant type investment but that's about it so you need to understand that you can't do it. when we were two years ago we would never be able to raise 20 million dollars clearly you, it's, it's a progression you've got to raise you know, more and more money as time goes on um, so the angel round this is where you've got basically a, a concept something that works something that you can show investors people want to see stuff on the screen they want to be able to click buttons and go okay this is a this is something which is interesting um, so we had a, you know, a couple million rand, I think it was $500,000, the rand was about 6 to 1 average cost in incubators. So that was our 3 million rand investment uh, in the previous company. We spun it out and we rebuilt all that technology from scratch. Um, and we launched, um, we launched our alpha version with a cost of about 800,000 rand in 6 months. So that's just 3 guys working in a room, one or 2 contractors and me running around trying to get finance uh, without a salary. We were able to bootstrap it at a very low cost. Um, we then got the extra $200,000 uh, 
uh, to get the beta. So the beta was just basically the point where this is actually a working product that people could use functionally. It wasn't full featured, it was just a basic functional product. And on the back of that, we were able to raise the funding of $5 million. So at that point, we had 10,000 users, and we just got in there and you know, we went to invest and said, look, this is something that can scale to millions of users. So the strategy we used to get to the point where it was fundable, so we call it angel phase, where someone put money in and it was working business, um, the strategy we used was just get the product up to market quickly. Don't sit in a room for two years or 12 months and, and just tinker with it. Just build a version 0.1, put it live on the web. For us, it's, as a web business, it's a lot easier. And let people start using it. And let them know it's in alpha stage and it's just testing. But that testing helped us discover bugs and the feedback helped us refine the business. And it's, it's good to get it out there because you, you, once it's out there, you feel a lot more sense of um, responsibility to the market. You start making sure your servers are looked after, there's uptime. You start building a business from day one. Um, and you know, and pitching to investors, don't you have have one person look for funding. Don't have everyone running around talking to investors. You know, first of all, you'll six to ten mixed messages, multiple messages, uh, which is wrong. And the the second thing you do is you know, basically get the people who are building the, the code getting high and you know ups and downs when the investors are like, yes, let's go to the next round. And they go back to the next meeting and they just waste time. And then eventually the guy says, no. I've got so many people who messed me around when I was looking for finance the first time around, I could have throttled them. I mean, oh no, term sheet's coming next week, term sheet's coming next week. Yes, we want to invest. No, we're interested. All that BS. And all it does is basically mess with your emotions. I was a wreck afterwards. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's not fun. And so have one person do it and deal with all that, all that crap, and let the, all the, the other guys just get on with the business of writing the code and building the business. Um, Grassroots attention, blogging, presenting, getting out there, talking to people about it, being on Twitter, letting people know what you're doing, getting <coughs> back, um, attracting attention, and get yourself typecast as one of the market leaders, one of the players in a new emerging space, so that when there's PR opportunities, people think about you. And then Bootstrap, you know, we, we took desks in our own offices. We, we, did, we got a quote for desks at, at second hand furniture, it was like 20 grand, or like, that's just too expensive. We took plaques, like literally, we went to, um, my father-in-law actually helped me out. We went down to a hardware store and we bought plaques. We plugged them against the wall, we put brackets on it, we put pylons down there, and the whole office was kit out for five grand. <laughs> you know, it was that sort of mentality, and that's starting gardens. And you know what? It's still there to this day. So and people use it, and it's fine. And so it's perfect. You just use planks on the wall. You know, cut your costs. Don't don't spend money unnecessarily and, and especially not on stuff like furniture. And that's just a waste of you know, I bought myself a decent chair because I had back problems. <laughs> um, chairs are one thing which I wouldn't skip. Don't skip on chairs and don't skip on uh, monitors. Get decent monitors and decent chairs. You guys are spending the whole day in front of the computer and the whole day in the chairs coding. Get decent chairs and monitors. The rest of the stuff uh, is crap. Maybe a decent coffee machine. Um, <laughs> that's about it. That's what you really need. So, from Series A, for, you know, so by Series A for us was a proof of concept. So now we've got this product. It sort of works, people are using it, there's 10,000 users. Can we turn this into a business? You know, from a product to a business, two very big differences. You know, anyone can build a product. Can they build a business out of it that's profitable and scalable? Um, we thought we could, we still think we can, and I think we're doing it. So for us, taking the five million dollars was basically, we said, okay, we have to get a million users by the end of this money, by the time this money is used up. How fast we do it is up to us. Our investors actually put pressure on us to say, listen, go faster because um, we don't mind putting more money in. We, th we think there's a potential, but this year, yeah, you'd rather basically burn and fail quickly than drag it on. <laughs> okay, so the view was okay. Let's build the user base. Let's get there. Let's prove the let's prove the business. So, um, literally after the you know after I got my visa, I was on the plane like two days later and just jumped in. I still got my clock. We didn't sell anything. I got a little house still here. Everything. Just jumped on the plane, moved to San Francisco, rented apartments. Uh, you know, and just get on the ground and get everyone out.